The movie begins with an inhuman sound in the background. Then we see a boat stranded in the middle of nowhere. Inside that boat, a man lies unconscious. Suddenly he wakes up and finds everything disoriented around him. The boat seems to be near Block Island. He finds everything in a state of chaos, including an unoccupied dog leash. The poor man looks terrified and lost. In the next scene, we see three friends sitting around in a cafe. One of them, named Dale, is very talkative and believes in supernatural conspiracy theories, whereas his friend Harry is fed up with his chatter. While he goes on with his strange explanations, Harry tells him to stop spouting nonsense. A moment later, Harry gets going, and Dale runs after him to ask for a lift. On the way, they accidentally get hit by something. The duo gets out, to find that it is an injured bird, which, a few moments later, passes away. Soon, Harry drops off Dale and reaches home to find his father, Tom, missing. He gets worried and looks around, to find him in the backyard in front of the neighbor's dog. He calls out to him, and when he looks back, we see that he is the same man who lay unconscious in the boat earlier. Harry becomes aware of some strange actions from his father, like going out on his fishing boat in the middle of the night and being unresponsive during conversations. He brings him inside and watches as he goes to his bed. The next day, we see a woman named Audrey who works for the Environmental Protection Agency. She gets a call from her chief, who assigns her a task in Block Island, where her family, Harry and Tom, live. At first, she is reluctant to go, because she seems to be on tense terms with her family, but she eventually decides to go with her only daughter Emily, and worker Paul. It turns out that Block Island is facing eerie and unusual phenomena. A large number of fish have been washing up on the shore, and Audrey is sent to investigate the strange occurrences. The next day, Audrey, Emily, and Paul board a ferry to Block Island. She decides to stay on the island with her father and brother, despite some lingering tension after their mother's passing. Back at home, Harry wakes up to find his father missing. He panics and runs outside to see the boat gone. He calls his father through the walkie-talkie and gets no response. Just as he is about to get really worried, Tom returns with the boat, saying that he took it out in the morning. Harry tries to question him, but then Tom gets a call from Audrey, who says that she is coming home for a few days. Tom gets excited to know that his daughter is coming home after so long. While Audrey and Paul investigate the strange events on the island, they get to know that every couple of days, tons of fish get rolled up onto the shore. They go to the site to find crazy amounts of fish scattered all around. Little Emily gets really scared. They get home, and over dinner, Tom asks about the possible reasons for such happenings. They discuss it could possibly be due to hypoxia. When too many fish are in the same area, and they deplete the oxygen in the water too fast, so they end up suffocating. Now fish suffocating in water is quite unimaginable. Tom also gets fascinated. After dinner, Audrey goes to drop off Paul, while Harry tries to connect with his niece by teaching her how to fish. While they fish, a couple of fish wash up to their side, and Harry takes Emily away to catch frogs. However, Tom's behavior becomes more erratic over time. Audrey comes back after dropping off Paul, to find him spacing out in the kitchen. She calls him twice to get his attention. He looks disturbed, so she goes to talk to Harry about him, who cuts her off by saying that he is alright. That night, Audrey takes Emily to sleep, and finds the frog she caught with Harry in a jar. When Audrey says it would miss its family, Emily says that her mother takes animals from the water all the time, so she can keep the frog too. Her mother lets her keep the frog, but she explains that they only take out some brave fish, so that they can study them and help all the other fish get better. Later that night, Emily wakes up screaming, with Tom standing over her. They assume it's a nightmare, but Audrey becomes increasingly worried about her father's mental state. She comes to tell Harry that she is going back, first thing in the morning. The next morning, Harry wakes up to find Audrey packing up in a hurry. Harry tries to convince her to stay for breakfast, but she refuses. He asks if she told Dad, and she says that he isn't up yet. Harry at once gets worried, knowing his father, and runs to look for him. His fears are realized when Tom disappears without a trace, after going out on his boat in the middle of the night. It's as if he has vanished from the face of the earth. Nobody is able to find the poor old man. Harry decides to investigate the area where his father may have drowned by borrowing scuba gear. He dives into the water and, after looking around, gets into contact with a strange dark energy. Before he can see anything else, he loses consciousness underwater and wakes up later to find himself lying on the boat, with the electronics malfunctioning, and a strange and human sound echoing around him. The local authorities believe that Tom has drowned, and eventually, his body is found washed up on the shore, confirming their suspicions. Tom was the only close friend and confidant that Harry had. He finds it hard to come to terms with the circumstances surrounding his father's demise. After going to confirm the found body's identity in the morgue, he notices bruises and cuts on Tom's face, and discovers further evidence of chaos and a faulty radio on the fishing boat after his father's disappearance. Harry's mental state declines rapidly, especially after his sister Jen returns home for the funeral from New York. He gets into a physical altercation with an older man during his father's funeral, leading to Harry's arrest and a night spent in jail. After his release, he comes back home, and that night he finds himself sleepwalking to the fridge and rapidly taking out food. The next morning he wakes up on a boat in the middle of the ocean, with food scattered all around him. He is unable to recount the happenings of last night, and gets terrified of everything that's been happening to him since he blacked out underwater. He comes back home in a daze, 
and gets annoyed when his sisters call him out on the mess he made in the kitchen that he does not even remember. Harry's life keeps getting more and more messed up. Night comes, and the family sits around the dinner table, eating and bonding a little after everything they have been through. Harry tries to mend his bond with Jen, and offers to give her a lift to the ferry. After dropping her off, Harry sees a deer on his way back. He stops the car, but just then, all the electronics start malfunctioning, and he sees a vision of his late father, Tom. Tom keeps shouting, deer, at him, and Harry hits the deer, as if he is being controlled by an unknown force. He takes the deer to the ocean afterward. The next morning, an officer sees Harry's car while driving past his house, and sees cans of beer inside it. The truck seems all smashed up, and he sees blood on it. He comes to ask Harry, and finds that it was a deer he hit. Audrey becomes increasingly worried about her brother. He tells her about how their father was acting strange, and he didn't tell anyone, and now he is no more. Harry blames himself for their father's demise, and tells Audrey that everything that happened with their father is now happening to him. Harry's behavior becomes increasingly erratic, prompting Audrey to take him to a psychologist in Providence for a diagnosis. The psychologist suggests that Harry might be suffering from electromagnetic hypersensitivity caused by the Block Island Wind Farm, and advises them to speak with a former patient who has also experienced similar symptoms. As a result, he has cut himself off from all electronics. She gives Audrey the man's address. After coming back, Harry goes to the beach and finds Dale camp there. Dale says that he is supervising the strange phenomena there, since someone ought to. Harry tells Dale that something is wrong with him, and he thinks it's related to the island. Dale takes him to his garage, where he stores all the paranormal activity data and gives the files to Harry so he can read them. He takes the files back home, with zero intention of looking at them. Harry's mental state continues to deteriorate. That night, Harry sees a nightmare where his dad is lying on the beach, shouting, dog, at him. He wakes up and finds all the electronics in his room malfunctioning. He throws them all out, in hopes of making the non-stop voice of his father disappear, but then he sees him. There his father stands, brooding over him, telling him to take the dog. Unable to resist, Harry complies, and finds himself with the dog in the middle of the ocean. Once there, all hell breaks loose. The atmosphere turns ominously dark, and everything is sucked up into the sky. However, they come crashing back down to the boat, and the dog disappears, leaving behind only its leash. The next morning, a much disoriented Harry returns to find his sister freaking out. She asks about the dog, and Harry denies any connection to it, but she sees the scratch marks on his hand. Audrey becomes furious after the bizarre incident and the disappearance of the dog. She leaves Emily in Paul's care and goes to meet with the former patient, who is in a camper in West Greenwich. The atmosphere turns dark when the man tells Audrey that his paranoia is the result of being watched or controlled by some extraterrestrial power. He cautions her that if she doesn't get Harry off the island, someone will end up hurt. She freaks out and leaves the man shouting after her to take Harry away from the island or someone might end up losing their life. A freaked out Audrey, disturbed by her meeting with the former patient, rushes back to take the last ferry home. Meanwhile, Harry resists another vision of his father who tells him to take Emily. Instead, Harry goes for a late-night drive and nearly hits a female jogger. He tries to attack the woman, but is unsuccessful and eventually returns to the house where Paul is watching over Emily. When Audrey returns, she finds Paul unconscious and hears Emily screaming as Harry is abducting her onto the fishing boat. Audrey jumps onto the vessel as it leaves the dock, but is unable to reason with her psychotic brother. Harry returns to the site of all the evil disturbances and stops the boat. As he moves away for a bit, Audrey tries to send signals for help through the radio, but the device malfunctions. Harry comes back, and after a little struggle, Audrey barricades herself and Emily in the cabin of the boat. They hear a strange gurgling sound, and the boat rattles as objects on the boat, along with Harry, start ascending into the sky again. Audrey and Emily are sent flying to the cabin ceiling, and Audrey is carried into the sky as the cabin door gives way. The next morning, the authorities, along with Paul, come to their rescue and discover Emily alone in the cabin of the boat. At the end of the movie, Audrey is shown floating alive in the ocean after being dropped into it. Meanwhile, a voiceover from an earlier scene is played, where she explains to Emily the reasons why they take out fish from their natural habitat and study them. We are left with so many unanswered questions at the end. Nobody knows where Harry went, or the poor dog, for that matter.